Hey Reader Pops, welcome back to my channel. Welcome from a Britney Spears angle. And I'm wearing low rise shorts. This is very Britney Spears of me right now. But today I'm gonna show you all the books on my bookshelf that I have not read yet, AKA a physical TBR, which is to be read. I never know if I should put TBR in the title because I don't know if a lot of people know what that means, but I'm sure all of us book people know what that means. So I'm just gonna show you everything on my shelf that I haven't read. So come on, come down. I'll also give you my excuse for why I haven't read it because there's a reason for all of them. I just thought it was interesting because I was looking at my bookshelf and I was like, whoa, I've actually read so many of these books. Like, okay, let's just start. I've read all of the Addicted series except for this last book. I'm gonna pull all of these out. Give me a second. Whoa, that was really good. Okay, yeah, so I've read all nine books in the Addicted slash Calloway sister series and then this this is the epilogue book, Some Kind of Perfect by Krista and Becca Ritchie. And look at how thick it is. It is, should I just read the last line? The last line is all six of us. That's really cute. There's 727 pages in this. I think it's all six of their point of views. Crazy, but if I finish this book, that means I finish the series and I don't want to ever finish the series. So at this point too, if I read the epilogue, I feel like I'm going to forget all of the stuff that happened. I've read all of these. So I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and I didn't like it. It felt very cartoony and it just felt like I wasn't connecting with them. So I also did not read Take a Hint, Danny Brown or Act Your Age, Eve Brown, even though I've heard that these two are way better than the first one. I just really remember like not liking reading uh, Get a Life, Chloe Brown. So, but it's such a cute series. So I'm kind of happy to have all three books. Listen, one day I want to have a house with like a huge library in it because books are just the coziest thing in the world ever. Okay, I've read all of these except for the second book in the Bromance Book Club series. This is Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. I got it from the Half Price Bookstore. I read the first one and I liked it. I gave it like three stars, but I just, I don't really have the urge to continue the series, which is gonna be a running theme in this video is me just buying series ahead of time. So I've learned my lesson now, okay guys? But also it's so cute on your bookshelf to have like the whole matching series. I know, I know. Okay, moving down here. Technically, I didn't finish this. I DNF'd this book. This is While We Were Dating by Jasmine Guillory. This was the last book that I tried to read in my reading for 50 hours straight video. So as you can imagine, I was done reading by then and I had started this book and I just didn't really like where it was going that much so I DNF'd it. So technically I didn't read it. And then I read all of these. I just recently bought this. This is The Map From Here to There by Emery Lord. And apparently this is the second book in a series, which I did not know. I'll have to buy the first one first and read that. And then we have Always Jane by Jen Bennett. Um, the reason I haven't read this is because I just read Starry Night, Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. And then I DNF'd it after reading 300 pages. And then I read really bad reviews about this book on Goodreads. So Honestly, I should have tried to return this. I don't know if I still can or donated it because I'm probably not gonna read it, but these are ones that I bought recently. This is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. It's a really popular YA romance and I'm definitely going to read this. I just haven't yet, but it's probably gonna be a really great palette cleanser. Just really cute, fun, cutesy little romance to fly through. All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I haven't read this because I've heard that it's really sad and I have to be prepared to read a sad book, but I did see the Netflix show for it. Like I haven't watched it, but I saw it on Netflix and I really like the actor that they chose for the girl. So that kind of made me want to read it a bit more. Also yell at me in the comments to read any of these books if you have read them and you really like them. Here are some in the back. I'm just going to fly through these. The 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenna Bayliss. This was a gift and obviously it's a Christmas book, so I'm not reading it right now. This is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar. I actually did start this book and it is so confusing. It's one of those science fiction confusing books that you just have to read for a long time and then you understand and I lost patience and gave up. <laughs> Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Obviously super popular book. At some point I will get to it. And The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This is a classic so obviously I'm gonna procrastinate for as long as possible because it's a classic and I heard it's also very sad. Back to the shelf we have Loveless by Alice Oseman. I've never read an Alice Oseman book and I feel like this is going to read more like literary fiction because it's about a girl who's gonna go to college and basically her journey figuring out that she's asexual, I think, which I really just wanna read an Alice Oseman book because I've never read one by her before, but I have never really been wowed by a literary fiction and I don't know if it's really my thing. So that's my idea of this book, but it could be wrong. It might just read like a good book. I don't know. <laughs> and then we have Just Last Night by Mahari McFarlane. It says two best friends, one missed chance, a night that changes everything. I bought this thinking it was just like a cutesy romance. And then it turns out there's actually a lot of grief in this book. And that is something that is very hard for me to read at the moment. So I'm avoiding this at all costs. And then I've read all of these so we can go down to the last shelf. I've read all of these. And then this series I have not read. I got Fable and Namesake by Adrian Young. Look at how pretty the covers are. That is so 
pretty and I got them on sale from Target because they were doing like a buy two get one free. So I kind of went crazy and like bought a bunch of hardcover fantasies that I would one day want to read. And also these are just so pretty. Like one day if I have a big bookshelf, I'll definitely put this on display. But this is a pirate type fantasy. I actually started reading the first few pages of this book um, and then I just never got into it. But I've heard really good reviews. So yell at me if I should do that. Another thing you'll notice is if I genre hop, like for a second there, I really wanted to read more fantasy books. So I bought a bunch and then I went back to romance. So anytime I've been like, oh, I'm gonna try general fiction or I'm gonna try fantasy, we end up with some unread books on the shelf. But I read Caraval, which I didn't like that much. So I have not read the second book, Legendary, which I've heard is people's favorite. And then Finale and Once Upon a Broken Heart, which I thought this was a spinoff from this series, but people have said that you can read it as a standalone. So let me know if that's true because this sounds really cute. And then Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I got recommended this as a fantasy with romance subplot and I definitely wanna read one of her books, so. Okay, next we have this weird conglomeration of books here. I've read all of these and then I have not read any of these. I have not read any of the Sally Rooney books that I have bought because I keep hearing like horrible reviews about all of these books. So I have conversations with friends. Okay, I actually did try to read Normal People. I got maybe 20 pages in and then I gave up because if you guys don't know, Sally Rooney does not write quotation marks around her dialogue and it's very difficult to get used to. So I still have not read Normal People even though I tried. And then Beautiful World, Where Are You? I got excited because Jack Edwards rated this very high and it was her new release so I bought it and then I heard other terrible reviews and I got scared but she is an author that I really need to just try at one point to see if I like or not and then I have not here to be liked by Michelle Quatch I don't know if that's how you say her last name but I got this because it was a new release I saw it getting hyped up on TikTok and then I wanted to do an academic rivals to lovers video and this is an academic rivals to lovers and then this one is too I don't see anything about this book anywhere but it's the only thing worse than me is you by Lily Anderson I actually was going to start reading this book and then I was looking at how many pages it was, I accidentally read the last line and it says, but I was too fracking happy to care. And I was like, okay, I just don't know if I'm gonna like a book if she wrote the word fracking. And that is why I have not read this yet. That's all for this. Let's move over to the living room. I love this little corner in the living room so much. Here I have, I'm actually reading this, The Forgotten Trinity by Dr. James White. If you're Christian and you wanna learn more about the Trinity, I would read this. And then I also picked up C.S. Lewis's Surprise by Joy, which is kind of his testimony of how he went from atheist to Christian. And then C.S. Lewis's Letters to Malcolm, which is a book about prayer. I have a lot of Christian nonfiction books upstairs that I have not gotten to or that I like read half of. Someone commented and was like, you really need to buy more nonfiction. And I was like, I left out all of the nonfiction that I own because they're mostly Christian or like cringy business self-help books that I read like a long time ago. So they're not all cringy. Not all self-help is cringy, but you know what I mean? Like there's a genre. So I did not include those, but let's see, we have Dune here. This is actually what Ryan bought because he wanted to start reading. I bought Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson back in October when I wanted to read like murder mysteries and stuff. So this is a YA thriller murder mystery. Um, I'm saving that for the fall time. And then right here, I have not read The Master piece by Francine Rivers, but I love Redeeming Love by her. Her books are kind of thick. This one's like over 400 pages, but her books are so good. She's a Christian author, but her books are not overly, uh, I guess we can use the word religious. So even if you're not Christian, you can read them and they're just a beautiful love story. If you haven't watched my May TBR, a lot of those books are right here. These are the books that I've read so far in May. And then I have to read The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen, Meet Me at Midnight by Jessica Pennington, Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino. And oh, I actually just bought this. Winter in Paradise by Elin Hildebrand. I'm very excited to read that. So these are kind of like the books that I'm going to read next. And then down here, most of the books that I have not read are basically just continuations of series. So I read the first three books in the Shatter Me series and then I bought Restore Me and I haven't read it yet. And then for a video, actually, I read The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard and I liked it, but I wasn't obsessed. Like I got bored, but for the sake of the thumbnail, <laughs> I also bought Glass Sword and King's Cage and these covers are really, really, really pretty. Maybe one day I will finish them because I love her TikTok account. <laughs> And then I read the first three books in the Throne of Glass series and I have Assassin's Blade, which is kind of like the prequel, but everyone says you have to read this fourth before you read the next book. All of that debate on like what you should read first or when you should read this or if you need to read it really confused me. So I just kind of stopped reading the series, but that's also because I did not like Crown of Midnight, the third book. I really just started getting bored, but I can definitely see myself getting back into those like in the fall time. And then I never read Crooked Kingdom, which is the second book in the Six of Crows duology, which Sarah Caroli actually doesn't read fantasy, but she read this and she said this is like one of her favorite books of all time. And I know everyone loves this book, but like at this point I've gotten so many spoilers about like who dies, 
stories and who gets together that I just don't. I just am not interested at this point in reading it. And then I read Legends, bought the second book, Prodigy. Have not read that. The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. I feel like I'm actually gonna get very close to reading this soon, but apparently there is every trigger warning ever in there and that it's very graphic, so I don't really know. I don't know my limitations on like what I find to be too much yet because I don't really ever read things that are graphic, so we'll find out about that. And then I have Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allier Sands. I'm gonna read this one day. I know that it's it looks really, really, really fast to read and it seems so cute, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. I feel like these are more fall books, all of these down here. So I'm probably gonna save them for October to November and stuff. We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I really should look up the names of authors before I say them and butcher them. The text in this one is really small and I also bought this in my fantasy phase, which I am not in right now, but I will eventually get back into a fantasy phase, especially during the fall time and I will read this. A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. Another Naomi Novik book that I want to read because it's fantasy with a little bit of, does this one have romance? I actually don't know. And then Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I put this in a haul and then a bunch of people were like, Haley, I think that book is gonna be way darker than you want to read. So I was like, yeah, you're right. If it's dark and graphic and like, creepy. I don't think it's the book for me. And then a lot of people said that it's confusing for like the first half of the book. And I just really don't like when books are super confusing. It's just painful when a book is confusing. Over here, I have read Twilight. It's just been since middle school. So then I also bought Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer, which is basically the exact same thing as Twilight, except from Edward's point of view. Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. I also bought this in my fantasy phase when Target was having their sale, but I will read this because I think there's like a murder mystery aspect. It's YA and it has a lot of Native American culture in it. We're almost done actually. And then I have the ginormous Crave series by Tracy Wolf. I actually did start this. I read probably like 40 pages actually, which is a lot. And then I was in a book slump, so I just never continued it. But I think I will really like this since I am obsessed with Twilight. But again, it seems like a fall winter read. I'm just gonna keep these out for the thumbnail. Ow, my finger. Those books are so heavy. What the heck? And then lastly on this shelf that I haven't read is In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I am very excited to read this because it's like a murder mystery type thing but I'm not going to until the fall time again because I am a mood reader I want to read things in like the right setting and so right now I'm just gonna be reading summery books you know also I just bought every summer after it's literally sitting in my mailbox right now but I don't have the key and I'm probably gonna read that next right now I'm reading the roughest draft by Emily Wimberly and Austin Sigmund Broca it is so cute so far honestly it's giving me five star vibes you'll find out in my may wrap up what I rate it but I am very excited to finish this and then I'm probably gonna read every summer after so those are just about all the books that I own but have not read yet. So yell at me to finish some of these books and let me know what is on your TBR and make sure to subscribe to this channel for all the book and vlog content and my main channel. I do a series on there called In My 20s where I just kind of take you along my like coming of age process of being in your 20s and navigating life. And I also have a TikTok and Instagram. But other than that, I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye.